Um, I'm going to talk about, well, Women in Space is the title of this presentation. It's not the title of the movie. Um, and I'd first like to ask you some questions about population and population increase. Uh, just uh, write down some, some answers to this. What do you think was the world population in 1972? And um, what is the world population today? And what's the population of New York City? Uh, please um, have a guess. guess. Just guess first. Um, you can Google later. Actually, you don't need to Google. Just guess. And if you watch later, you can find out. Um, and what might happen if the population increases? Um, what do you think might happen? Uh, please uh, think about some um, predictions, problems, issues. Um, one thing that I think is happening is that we have um, we have a danger if the population increases, that we have limited resources and that means we can't all have those resources. Um, and I think this kind of gives us two choices. Um, the first choice is that we have an elite. So we have a small group of people who are in control and who can do what they want. And the masses, most people are living in poverty with nothing or with very little um, the other choice is um, equity and sufficiency so to be more fair about how we share and more equal about how we share the resources and um, sufficiency uh, which means that we have enough um, so not try to get more not try to have too much but try and work towards everybody has enough. Um, and the other choice is to carry on as we are. Now, I think carrying on, carrying on as we are is going to be the same as the first one, which is that the elites will be in control and will have more power, and the masses will have less power and less, um, less at all. So... Of these, I think equity and sufficiency is probably the better way to make everybody happy. Um, a big question is how do we get there? And I don't know the answer to this question. Maybe you do. Um, but the movie I'm going to talk about first is a movie called um, Soylent Green which is from 1972. Um, and this is a movie set in a future of 2022, uh, which is now quite soon. Um, it's set in New York. Um, in the movie, New York has a population of 40 million. Now, um, at the time... Um, the world population was increasing. The world population has increased and did increase a lot over the uh, 20th century. Um, the, that's a, a graph of global population up to the data is up to 2015. Um, and you can see it starting to get quite steeply increasing. Um, interestingly, the population of New York City um, fell in the 1970s and the 1980s. Uh, this is the um, New York City population, so you can see it increasing. And over the 20th century, the first half of the 20th century, in increasing very dramatically from uh, less than 2 million to about 7 or 8 million. And it's kind of stuck around um, maybe around 8 million um, since the 1940s. Um, and in fact, interestingly, in the 1970s, when this movie was being made and set in a New York City with a population of 40 million, the actual population of New York City was falling at that time. Um, it's since um, it's since it's increased again. 
Um, the world population, meanwhile, has doubled since 1972. Um, and the highest population growth was between 1955 and 1975. So when this movie was being made, um, the world population was growing faster than ever before. And since then, it's growing. The population is still growing, um, but it's growing a bit more slowly. Um, so in this movie, in this 19, in this 2022 New York City with a population of 40 million, um, global warming um, has been happening um, in the movie. There's a, a scene where the older character, the, the older character and the younger character, the older character starts talking about global warming and the younger character starts making a joke that he's always talking about global warming. Um, and remember, this movie was made in 1972. So, of course, people knew about global warming in 1972. Um, in this movie, it's happened um, because of global warming. Uh, food production is a problem because of global warming and because of the large population. So there's a huge restriction on food. Um Another thing in the movie that I I was quite uh, shocked, perhaps most shocked by, was the idea in the movie of what they call furniture. Uh, so as you can see in this picture, this is one of the um, elite characters. And in the movie, they talk about women as furniture, um, which I, I find quite um, shocking. Um, and also wonder why this happens. And... Um, we could look at it as a few different ways. Um, the environment has been degraded. And of course, this also means that women are degraded. Um, another interpretation is that inequality, um, where there is inequality, often women suffer more and are less fairly treated. So, so inequality means... Um, less equality for women and women come out come out harder um another interpretation is the connection between women's rights and population um that in fact population increase um is often connected to women not having rights and if women have rights um that also means that population uh, can be controlled and does not increase um so wildly Another interpretation um, is that this movie was made by men and men in the 1970s were just thinking about women as furniture. And I'm just going to look at look at movies and men and something that you may know that's called the, uh, the Bechdel test. Um, this is a test about a movie. Um, and it's related to gender treatment in the movie. And it's quite simple. You need to have, in the movie, you need to have two women in the movie. And some some movies don't have two women in them at all. Um, and the two women need to talk to each other and not about a man. Um, this is a fairly simple test. And you would think it's quite easy to make a movie which has two women who talk to each other, not about a man. But just looking at the movies that we've been watching um, so far in this class, um, two of them, only three of the movies pass this test. Uh, so Gattaca does not have two women who talk to each other. Um, not about a man. Soylent Green does not. Um, Back to the Future, The Matrix and Brazil do have um, more than two or more women and they do talk to each other and not about a man. Um, but they tend to be quite small roles. And if we also look at who made these movies, um, who was the director, who wrote the movie, who wrote the screenplay, who is the main actor... Um, all of these movies have male directors, male writers, 
and male lead actors. Uh, there's a couple of quotes from the movies that we've seen um, at the beginning of Back to the Future when uh, Doc sends uh, Marty's girlfriend to sleep. Um, he says she's not essential to my plan. And um, it, it's almost as if that's the movie. Um, she's not essential to the movie plot. Um, it's about Doc and it's about Marty and it's about Biff. Um and there's a line in when Neo meets Trinity in The Matrix. Um, Neo says, I thought you were a guy. And then Trinity says, well, most guys do. Uh, so if we look at um, the movies in general, that's the movies we've looked at in this class. Um, if we look at, for example, Oscar winning movies, this is the Oscar, uh, the Academy Award Best Picture movie. Um, every year there's a there's a movie that's the best movie from Hollywood or that Hollywood thinks is the best movie. Um, and we can see um, it's around half of the movies pass the Bechdel test. Um, so past this very basic idea that there are two women in the movie who talk to each other, not about a man. Um, are only about half of the Academy are winning movies. Um pass this test the 1970s was particularly bad for movies with gender equality um, and if we look again at the best director the best director oscar the academy award for best director um, this is a list of female best director oscars um, there's only one only one woman has ever won an oscar for the best director and in fact there are only five times um, to become to to win an academy award you need to be get a nomination and there are only five nominations for female best directors out of 440 nominations um, and in fact this is um, partly just a reflection of movie directors who are usually men. So most movies are made by male directors. Um, and I think it's probably true to say that the most, certainly most movies are made by men. If we look at the Bechdel test and the main characters, most of the movies are about men. And probably there are four men um, who will buy the tickets and go and see the movies um, in the 30s. Um, the future... Um, hopefully this will change. Um, movies hopefully will be made for, um, for women as well as men. And hopefully more movies will be made by men. Just to go um, back to the title of my presentation is Women in Space. And I have another question for you, which is um, when did um, the first woman go to the moon? Uh, when did the first woman go to the moon in real life? And um, how about in movies? Well, in real life, it hasn't happened yet. Um, only men have gone to the moon. Um, there is a movie, though. Um, this was the first woman in movies to go to the moon. Um, in Back in 1929, in a German movie... Uh, called Frau im Mond. Uh, this was directed by Fritz Lang, um, from, who also directed a, a movie called Metropolis, another future movie uh, from the Germany in the 1920s. Uh, the screenplay and the novel were by Thea von Harbo. And um, this movie is interesting. Also, technically, this is, as well as um, in terms of gender and in terms of women going to the moon, um, in a movie in the 1920s. Um, the, the rocket science in the movie is quite interesting. And some of the rocket science in this movie is science that we use, or that has been used for rockets, for Apollo, and for space missions now. Um, for example, the rocket is transported to the launch site. Uh, the countdown, when there's a rocket launch, 10, 9, 8... That came from this movie. So the first rocket launch countdown 
was in a movie and then real life has copied the movies. Uh, they used water in the movie to, uh, to take away the heat and the noise of the launch. Um, the rocket has different stages. Uh, so to get into space, you need lots of fuel. Uh, so the after burning the first amount of fuel, that stage was dropped, sent back to the Earth, which happened in this movie and happens with space, with rocket launches. Um, in the rocket, they use beds because of the g-force as the, the rocket's accelerating into space. There's a lot of um, extra gravity. Um, and then when they get into space, there's no gravity. Uh, so the spaceships have straps to hold on to move around. Um, interestingly, this, this movie was banned, was censored in Germany uh, from 1933 to 1945. Um, because the movie also shows technology that was used for bombs and missiles that were being used by Germany to attack other countries. Um, there you have a movie about women in space. Um, this is another... Um, these are two quite famous, or probably not so famous, two women who probably should be famous... Um, in the world of computing. Um, Ada Lovelace is on the left who invented the algorithm and Grace Hopper is on the right who invented a compiler uh, which means you can write computer programs um, using words and language. Um, so, the future. 